in this set of videos, we're going to talk about some applications of solving linear systems. Now, Table 7.1 shows the personal consumption expenditures in billions of dollars for dentist and health insurance in the U.S. for several years. Now, the one big thing here, it gives us years 1995 through 2003, and it gives us all these numbers for dentists and health insurance. So what you want to do for the year, let y equal, or sorry, x equal, because x is time, x equals 0 will be 1990. That means 1995 will be 5, 98 will be 8, 99 will be 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. What I want you to do is enter this list. So you're going to press the stat button, press enter on edit, and then you have, if you see here, I've got list 1, 2, and 3 already made. So in for list 1, x equals 0 equals 1990. So 95 will be 5. So that's why I started here at night at 5. Enter all this into list 1. In list 2, I want you to enter 45.4 and all those numbers into list 2. In list 3, I want you entering all the numbers for health insurance. Now at this time, pause the video, enter the list. I already entered them ahead of time in order to save time on the video. But again, pause the video, enter the list into list 1, 2, and 3. Now, on example 7, we need to find linear regression equations for the U.S. personal consumption expenditures for dentists and health insurance in Table 7.1. We're going to superimpose their graphs on a scatter plot. So we need to find an equation for dentists and health insurance. We need to find equations for these. Again, not very difficult, but we do have to play with the numbers a little bit. Now, if we're to find a linear regression, we're going to press the stat button, go over to calculate, Go down to number four, which is linear regression. Press enter. Now, if you remember right, we made list one as the year, list two as the dentist, list three as the health insurance. So when we do this, we want second one for the year, second two for the dentist, and then in order to put this equation into your y equals, you press the bars button, go over to y bars, press enter on function, and press enter on number one to put it into y1. So what this will do, here's your equation, 3.851, and we plus, 24.408. So there's your equation for dentists. Now for health insurance, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. Press stat, go over to calculate, go down to number four, linear regression, list one, list three for health insurance, and then press bars, Y bars, I'm going to put it down into Y2 for the second equation. And again, by doing that, it automatically puts it into your Y equals. So your equation Y equals 5.61X. plus 28.92. So there's your equation for health insurance. Now, if you want to graph these, because it says superimpose a plot on the data, in order to graph these, you press second y equals. That will get us up to our scatter plot menu. Press enter on number one. I want to turn it on, so highlight one and on. X list, 
times list one, Y list, is your dentist, which is list two, so we're good there. Now, if you press second Y equals again, go down to plot two, turn it on. But instead of list two for dentist, you want to do health insurance for list three. So second three. I'm going to make it the plus signs. So go down here for your mark and make it the plus signs. Now a good window here, if we go negative 10 to 20, that's fine. Okay. It says there the year is 0 to 13, really. So negative 10 to 20 is fine. X scale of 1. 0 is fine for the Y min. Y max will make it about 125 because it says there the health insurance in billions of dollars is 106. So there you go there. So there's our two graphs. Okay. Let's take a picture of it. So there's our two graphs. There's a superimposing the graph on a scatter plot. Now as long as you know that it's going to be on your graph, that's fine. Now for part B, it says use the models in part A to estimate when the U.S. personal consumption expenditures for a dentist will be the same as that for health insurance in the corresponding amount. So what we want to find, we want to find the intersection point. So you want to press second trace, go down to number five for intersection. Yes, that's my first curve. There's my second curve. There's my intersection. So my intersection point will be about when x is negative 3. Well, that means three years before 1990. So that tells me sometime in the year 1987. That's when expenditures for dentists and health insurance will be about the same. And again, it's going to be about $14.5 billion. Now, in example 8 here, suppliers will usually increase production if they can get higher prices for their product. So as one variable increases, the other also increases. Normal mathematical practice would be used, would use P as the independent variable and X as the dependent variable. However, most economists put X on the horizontal axis and P on the vertical axis. In keeping with this practice, we write P is equal to F of X for a supply curve. On one hand, as the price increases, so does the willingness for suppliers to increase production. On the other hand, the demand X for a product by consumers will decrease as price goes up. So as one variable increases, the other decreases. Again, economists put X, demand, on the horizontal axis, and P, which is the price, on the vertical axis, even though it seems like P should be the dependent variable. In keeping with this practice, we can write P is equal to G of X for a demand curve. Finally, a point where the supply and demand curve intersect is an equilibrium point and the corresponding price is going to be the equilibrium price. So really, anytime you're in economics, generally you're finding equilibrium prices. You're finding when the supply and demand is at its equilibrium point. So, an example right here. Nibok Manufacturing has determined that product, or that production and price of a new tennis shoe should be geared to the equilibrium point for this system of equations. P is equal to 160 minus 5x, and P is equal to 35 plus 20x. So the price P in dollars and the number of shoes X is in millions of pairs. Find the equilibrium point. So what we're going to do, we're going to put this into our equation. First, let's turn off our scatter plots by going up to plot 1 on Y equals and press, pressing enter. Go to plot 2, pressing enter. You want to make sure those are unhighlighted. Clear out your two equations. 
Put your first one in. 160 minus 5x, 35 plus 20x. Now, our window here should be okay. Let's actually change our y max. Let's, say, let's make it over 160. So let's just make it 200 here. Y min, zero, makes sense for the price. X min, X max, should be okay there. So let's graph it. Okay. Where those two lines intersect is going to be your equilibrium point. So second trace, let's find our intersection. So your intersection is at 535. So there is your intersection point. So equilibrium price is $135. Now the equilibrium number of shoes would be 5 million. So they want to make 5 million pairs of shoes and set the price at $135. That's all you're really doing here. You're finding where they intersect. It's another application of using systems of two equations. 